just everyone's like reactions. Like you, sh you used to be able to say you did something that hurt my feelings and have a conversation about it, or used to have opposing opinions and have a conversation about it. And now it's, if you offended me, like we're mortal enemies, or if you don't align with me exactly down the line, we're mortal enemies. And then I feel like with everything happening with COVID and you mentioned a lack of purpose, like you, all of these kind of interlace together. It's like the less we have going on for ourselves, the more we focus on other people, like especially if in times of disparity. So if we lost our jobs or we haven't seen loved ones rather than like look introspectively and try to get yourself out of like this dark place, you start looking at everything wrong in the world and other people. Um, do you think that there's a correlation between that and I guess like the decline of marriages or like the thought that you need a partner? Because I see like so many, especially women that are like, I'm this strong, independent woman and I don't need a man and I can do everything by myself. And I think some along that way, we're losing purpose and getting angrier, if that makes sense. I know that I kind of was drawn out on that. Um, but what's your perspective on that? Yeah, I think, you know, I think the devaluation of of men, of fathers, of boys, uh, particularly boys, I mean, that's an area that I think is uh, of of real interest for me. Um, th th that devaluation of the very idea of men is something that, um, you know, men have been boys and boys will become men. So how can we have this conversation and talk about these difficult subjects that do deal with things like you started off by talking about trauma and our, our, our family of origin and dysfunctional family systems. And, you know, I think everyone deals with a certain level of trauma mm -hmm. um, and trauma resides in the body and the body keeps the score and the organism is, is carrying that weight of trauma around and life is remembered backwards and lived forward. So how, you know, what is the definition of feeling and emotion and how can we make sense? We are sense makers of that trauma that we carry in those situations and maybe rewrite the script uh, that we tell ourselves or the predominant script, whether it's, you know, of our, of our childhoods or our past, if you will, there are many different versions of ourselves. Mm -hmm. So when I think about boys, um, I think about our education system. You know, our education system is f massively, f I think it's failing children in general, but I particularly think it's failing boys. Um, and with that, an extra burden is placed on fathers, on men, on masculinity to pick up the slack um, with much more immediate remedial interventions to help stem our boy crisis. And that, that general lack of motivation being instilled in our younger generations of boys uh, by an educational system that's not paying much attention to what boys need is disturbing. And, you know, I look at the five factors driving this growing epidemic of unmotivated boys and underachieving young men, which are video games, prescription drugs, environmental toxins, the, devalu the devaluation of masculinity and teaching methods. And I mean, you look at teaching methods in our schools, boys need motivational curriculums. Um, and, when I look at the biggest proponent of why the, the, the people who are fighting the hardest to stop curriculums evolving or devolving curriculums to be less motivational for boys, it's, you know, frankly, radical, postmodern, uh, progressive feminists, toxic, some would say, um, not the true equality feminists. I mean, mm -hmm. I've, I've had many fem uh, feminists on my show. Um, you know, there are some amazing women who've been fighting, you know, for equal um, rights for women for decades. Christina Hoff Summers, um, I think she's called the factual feminist. Camille Paglia, there's so many of them, but it's the, it's the rabid strain of misandrist feminists, I think, that really don't want uh, boys to do well. And our, I think our younger generations of young men are failing because we're not mentoring, shepherding, guiding, teaching, and better educating our boys um, to become more responsible. So as a parent of two boys, because I have a one-year-old, so I'm, we're not even in the education system yet, and that's some territory that I'm very scared to navigate and very um, ignorant as well at this point, just because of lack of exposure. Like, what do you look for to make sure that they have a positive experience in school and that they're not falling behind because you do see that 
now in the universities, right? Like women are far surpassing and outperforming men as far as like attaining degrees. Um, and it was almost like we wanted to get women to a place where we could go to school, right? And we could go to university and that was awesome. But then there was like almost an overcorrection that happened. And I feel like we do that in a lot of areas, right? Like we tend to see something that went wrong and then we overcorrect and then we need to kind of like steering a boat. Like you have to kind of take it easy to find like a nice steady way back, like forward instead of like these hard turns that we're doing. So if you have a young boy, like, how do you make sure that he succeeds? Like, what do you look for in the education system? Gosh, that's a really good question. Really good analogy too. Um, you know, gentling the the moves rather than the quick um, uh, stormy turns. Uh, gosh, what do you look for? I don't know. Every I remember when what I looked for for my boys was a more structured school. I guess more like the British school that I didn't have, and I regret doing that. You know. Um, I think, I think boys, I remember my six, uh, my, my youngest, when he was maybe six, he came home from school and I, I was checked in with my boys after school. And um, I said to him, you know, how was your day? And he said, I, f I just feel like a bird trapped in a cage. I said, what do you mean, son? He said, well, you know, I want to be out playing. He's got all this, this kinetic energy. And he's being told to sit down, shut up, uh, behave. Well, when I was five or six, I didn't know how to behave. You know, someone just telling me to behave. And I think the bigger themes as well of, of um, with, with, at schools, I, I hear a lot of we, we, us telling children what to think rather than teaching them how to think. My eldest did uh, English lit class and he was given a book and he read the book and his interpretation of the book was different to his, his female teacher. Mm. And, but she graded him down, like it was a terrible grade. And it was, it was a great book report. It was a really interesting interpretation of how he saw the story. And um, he went to speak because I've always empowered them to have a voice and speak up. So he went to speak to the teacher and he was just kind of chastised and made to feel devalued and that he got it wrong. And, and it's that rigid way of teaching that I think is, um, that is, is difficult. That's not to say that teachers don't have a, a hard time, but I think about books and the importance of reading. I mean, that's one thing I, I, I say to friends of mine who have little kids, keep your kids off devices as long as possible. Mm -hmm. you know, our device dependency, our chemical imbalances because of the dopamine hits. It's, it's difficult because of peer pressure, but um, really try and focus as a parent on what is best, what is the best school for your kid rather than the best school for you or what's the fanciest or greatest schools. There are some real gems out there that may be on right at the top. And just go into the library if they have a library or what books are in the classroom. You'll get a real a quick education on what the school is all about. Um, and I think the, the, the school of life, uh, says reading is a form of therapy, a way of processing our own thoughts, uh, through the medium of others or the other's words and books make sense of our experience and through simplification and empathy, they bring clarity to situations and states of mind that we ourselves are familiar with yet perhaps thus far I've lacked the means to analyze or make sense of. Um, and in the best of them, we find ourselves made comprehensible for the first time. Uh, they speak not only to their own age, but to all ages. So I think boys, boys aren't being given boy centric books at school, full stop. Boys will read if they're given materials that interest them. The male imagination requires inspiration and our teachers need to work with, not against the kinetic energy of boys. And we need to bring back recess. And oh, yeah. The savior at school is like to, to just get out of that classroom and play sports or run around or get beaten up or you know, all of the things that happens to boys. Mm -hmm. In recent years, we've lost 50% of boys' unstructured playtime. I heard, I can't remember where I, I was listening to this, but I heard that the one of the main reasons they got rid of recess was because they were scared of abductions. Have you heard that? I haven't heard that, no. Yeah, it was like some dated, um, like back when it was like, it's it's 7 p.m. Do you know where your kids are? Did you ever see those commercials? I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, I, I grew up in Northern England in the in the 70s and 80s. And, and it was when, you know, our street, all of the parents knew each other. We were all playing as kids out on the street. And when it started to get dark, whatever that time was, it was, you know, time to go home. I mm -hmm. mean, time to go home. But I also, I remember when I was... 
I think I was maybe seven years old playing with the kids in the daytime. And this, this guy drove up in a car and he wanted directions. And I was just young and naive and I wanted to be helpful. And I remember, oh, it's down the street and you go turn right on the Kenilworth Road. And he said, oh, can you help me? Can you show me? I'll, I'll drop you back off. And I was sure. And before I thought about it, I got in the car with him. Oh, my God. That two minutes, because he was clearly not a good person. Right. Um, when he put his hand on my knee and I'd asked him to get out of the car and I felt trapped and I looked in the mirror and I'm driving away and my friends are just standing there. That so that is a worry, you know. Um, it, it really is a genuine worry, but that's not a reason why we should stop boys having recess and playtime. And um, sure, if you if, if you live in an area and that school is in an area where it's more prone to where the faculty think that there might be some abductions, fair enough, get some extra security. But I don't know if we want to be re reducing recess and playtime for boys because we're afraid of abductions. Um, yeah, and it's all fenced here too. For them. Like I've never seen a school that didn't have a gate around it. So it had the proper administrators like watching the children like you're supposed to be doing and it shouldn't be a problem. And I think there's also probably a little bit of fear around like kids getting hurt and they're like well what if someone in rough houses which is like it's normal kid behavior and i think we tend to over it goes back to like overreacting and overcorrecting so it's like maybe they get into a little scuffle and then one parent wants the other one's expelled and we kind of have to allow for just like human behavior it's kind of it's going to be like a bad analogy but like you know at the dog parks when you take your dog there and they have to like all the ones that are already there run up to the new dog and they're all sniffing and puffing up and barking and they just have to like kind of like sort it out themselves and then they can go play i feel like it's kind of the same on the, like the recess court right like the kids kind of have to like feel each other out and see where i belong in this herd and that's totally okay that's different than like bullying, right? It's very different. Um, but we have like this sense of just being so fragile and then we can't allow anything to happen. Like you can't have a snowball fight. You can't ha play dodgeball anymore. Like all of these things are banned. And I don't know, I feel like we're making like a bunch of um, just more fragile, less realistic adults when they grow up, right? Like the world's not easy.